When a 35-year-old woman was arrested in Florida, the FBI discovered that they were making a huge mistake. Until then, they thought that serial killers were all men. She was there to prove them wrong. Aileen Warnos became one of the most known women in America after she confessed to the murders of seven men in early 1991. Abused by her grandfather, raped by his friends, working as a prostitute by the age of 16, Aileen's life was far from perfect. What would have been her fate if things were different? Aileen Warnos was the 10th woman executed in America after the Supreme Court lifted the ban on the death penalty and the second woman ever executed in Florida. I'd just like to say I'm sailing with the rock, and I'll be back like Independence Day with Jesus, June 6th. Like the movie, Big Mothership and all, I'll be back. Aileen Warnos' final words before execution. Until 1991, the popular general belief was that all serial killers were white men, often motivated by sexual dysfunction. That changed on January 16th, when a 35-year-old female sex worker from Michigan confessed to the murders of seven men. Her name was Aileen Carol Warnos. Aileen Carol Lee Pittman was born in Rochester, Michigan on February 29, 1956. She was the second child of Diane Warnos and Leo Dale Pittman. Her parents got married very young. Her mother was only 15 and her father 17. Ten months after the marriage, they had their first child together, a boy named Keith. The marriage didn't work, and after almost two years of abuse, Diane decided to leave and file for divorce just two months before Aileen was born. Aileen never met her father. At the time of her birth, Leo Pittman was serving time in prison for the rape and attempted murder of a seven-year-old girl. He was considered a person with schizophrenia and had a history of convicted sex crimes against children. In 1969, he decided to terminate his life by hanging himself while serving time. A few years before his death, in January 1960, Diane left her children with her parents, Lori and Britta Warnos, and never returned. Aileen was almost four years old. On March 18, 1960, her grandparents legally adopted her and her brother and changed their names from Pittman to Warnos. She did not have a happy childhood in her grandparents' house. Laurie Warnos was an alcoholic and liked to discipline his daughters by beating them. Aileen claimed that he sexually assaulted her. She also engaged in sexual activities with her brother. At 11 years old, she traded sex for cigarettes at school. In 1970, when she was 14, she was raped by one of her grandfather's friends. She became pregnant after the rape and delivered the baby at a home for unwed mothers. The baby, a boy, was adopted and Aileen never saw him again. A few months after the baby was born, Aileen dropped out of school. Her grandmother died of liver failure during that period. At 15, her grandfather threw her out in the street. She started to gain her living as a sex worker and lived in the woods near her old home. Her life was full of misconduct behavior and police arrests. At 18 on May 27, 1974, 
Aileen was arrested in Jefferson County, Colorado for driving under the influence, disorderly conduct, and firing a 22 caliber gun from a moving vehicle. In 1976, Aileen met Louis Gratz Fell, 69 years old, in Florida. He was the president of a yacht club. They got married the same year, but the marriage didn't last for long. She used to be involved in disputes at their local bar, and eventually was arrested for assault. Fell obtained a restriction order against Warnos after hitting him with his cane. Their marriage was annulled on July 21st after nine weeks of marriage. She moved back to Michigan after the fight with Fell. On July 14th, 1976, Aileen was arrested in Antrim County and charged with assault and disturbing the peace after throwing a cue ball at a bartender's head. She managed to pay the fine with the money received from her brother's life insurance. Keith died on July 17th of esophageal cancer and left her $10,000. Aileen was arrested several times after that. May 20th, 1981, arrested in Edgewater, Florida for armed robbery. She was sentenced to prison on May 4th, 1982 and was released on June 30th, 1983. May 1st, 1984, arrested for attempting to pass forged checks at a bank in Key West. November 30th, 1985, suspect in the theft of a revolver and ammunition in Pasco County. January 4th, 1986, arrested in Miami, charged with grand theft auto, resisting arrest, and obstruction of justice for providing fake identification papers. In the stolen car was found a 38 caliber revolver. June 2nd, 1986. Brought in for questioning in Volusia County, Florida, after a male companion accused her of pulling a gun in his car and demanding $200. She was found carrying a 22 pistol and spare ammunition. During this time, Aileen met Tyria Moore at a Daytona gay bar. It was love at first sight. They moved in together and survived only on what Aileen gained from prostitution. Daytona Beach police detained them on July 4, 1987 for questioning. The two were accused of assault and battery with a beer bottle. Aileen Warnos passed from petty crimes to murder on November 30th, 1989. Her first victim was Richard Mallory, 51, an electronics store owner in Clearwater, Florida. His body was found on December 13th in a wooded area with four gunshot wounds. Later on during the trial, Aileen would claim self-defense because Mallory had tried to rape her. During the said trial, it would be revealed that Richard Mallory was a convicted rapist. David Spears, a 43-year-old construction worker, was next to die. On June 1, 1990, his body was found in Citrus County, Florida, nude with six gunshot wounds. Aileen's third victim was Charles Karskadden, a 40-year-old part-time rodeo worker. On June 6, 1990, his body was found in Pasco County, Florida, with nine bullet wounds. Peter Seams, a 65-year-old retired merchant marine, disappeared after leaving his home near Jupiter, Florida, for New Jersey. His body was never found. On July 4, 1990, Seams's car was involved in an accident. Eyewitnesses later told the police that two women were in the car at the moment of the accident. They would be identified as Aileen and Tyria. 
On July 31, 1990, Troy Burris, a 50 year old sausage salesman from Ocala, Florida, was reported missing. On August 4, 1990, his body was discovered in a wooded area along State Road 19 in Marion County, Florida, with two bullet wounds. On September 12, 1990, the body of Charles Dick Humphreys was found in Marion County, Florida. He was a 56-year-old retired U.S. Air Force Major, former state child abuse investigator, and former chief of police. He was shot six times in the head and torso. The last known victim of Aileen Warnos was Walter Geno Antonio, a 62-year-old police reservist. His body was found near a remote logging road in Dixie County, Florida on November 19, 1990. Antonio was shot four times. Aileen took different objects from each victim and later sold them to pawn shops. During this time, Tyria became more worried about Aileen's erratic behavior. In November 1990, she told Aileen that she would go to Ohio to visit her family. In the meantime, the authorities were making a tremendous discovery. The same killer made the seven murders, and it would appear it was a woman or a team of two women. The Volusia County Police managed to make a breakthrough in the case. They traced some items belonging to Richard Mallory to a Central Florida pawn shop. The receipt for the objects had Eileen's thumbprint on it. On January 9, 1991, Eileen was arrested at a biker bar in Volusia County. Because the authorities did not have enough evidence to arrest her for murder, they used an outstanding warrant for an earlier Colorado weapons charge. During this time, investigators were making contact with Tyria Moore. Tyria, wanting to avoid being accused of accessory to murder, agreed to try and convince Aileen to confess. She wrote her a letter and asked Warnos to call her. Aileen had no idea the conversations were recorded, and investigators trained Tyria on what to speak. After three days, Moore fulfilled her mission. On January 16, 1991, at 10.14 a.m., Aileen Warnos met with Sergeant Bruce Munster and arresting officer Larry Horpenza and confessed everything. She claimed the men had tried to rape her and she killed them in self-defense. Aileen Warnos received six death sentences and was executed by lethal injection on October 9, 2002. She was the first woman profiled as a serial killer by the FBI.